contained 6 pounds, 11 ounces. Adam Levine and wife Bahati Prinslow's first child will be a baby girl, according to reports. Multiple sources have confirmed to E! News the sex of the child and that Prinslow is nearly five months pregnant. The news comes after the couple revealed in March that they were expecting their first child together. The 36-year-old Maroon 5 frontman and 26-year-old model tied the knot in 2014 after dating for two years. On Saturday, Prinslow proudly displayed her first pair of maternity clothes and growing baby bump on Instagram, originally writing, Yep, took the plunge, first pair of maternity jeans, and it feels so good before posting a second version of the photo featuring herself posing in the pants multiple six times. Jennifer Aniston was revealed People's Most Beautiful Woman of 2016 on Wednesday. The 47-year-old actress, who previously earned the title in 2004, told the magazine she was, quote, very, very flattered by the honor, admitting there was this short of very excited, teenage kind of moment when she heard the news. Aniston has been a beauty inspiration to many since her early days on Friends, but didn't always feel great about her appearance. She has, learned, she has since learned to embrace her looks and feels her best when she's healthy and strong, she says. The actress says beauty has changed for me over the years it's really learning to love every single thing about yourself and also realizing that it's not just sort of clothes but that there's so much more that's beautiful in a human being uh, she also elaborated i define beauty as inner confidence peace kindness honesty a life well lived take on challenges and not feeling shame for things that haven't gone the way you feel they should have and not feeling like a failure or allowing to critique yourself as incited activist gloria steinem and actresses lauren hutton and Bridget Bardot as her beauty icons. The actress keeps fit, exercising six days a week and eating healthy, although she's no longer as strict about her diet. Uh, she said, it's funny, it's really a quick transition from not a care, and now all of a sudden we've got to be really mindful of what we put inside our bodies and how we sleep and take care of ourselves. You can't get away with a lot in your 20s. Comedian Tracy Morgan will not be traveling to perform in Mississippi in response to the state's new Religious Accommodations Act. The stand-up comedian is the latest celebrity to take a public stand against the new legislation following singer Brian Adams. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Tracy did not make this decision lightly. He very much looks forward to rescheduling his tour dates in the area after the Protection Freedom of Conscious from Government Discrimination Act is either repealed or heavily amended. The act passed earlier this month by Governor Phil Bryan, protects those accused of discrimination when refusing to serve service to LGBT individuals and couples for religious reasons. The bill comes at nearly the same time as another allegedly discriminatory legislation was passed in North Carolina prohibiting transgender individuals from using bathroom facilities aligned with their expressed, uh, expressed identity. High-profile acts such as Bruce Springsteen, Ringo Starr, and Pearl Jam have canceled shows in the state due to the new law. Morgan's Mississippi show was, was to have taken in place in Tunisia. Kanye West has admitted to buying his first cell phone in order to break up his now wife, Kim Kardashian, with her ex-husband, Chris Humphreys. The outspoken rapper discussed how he got in contact with Kim in a new clip for the upcoming series finale of Khloe Kardashian's FYI talk show, Cocktails with Chloe. West explained, I got a phone because somebody decided they wanted to marry Chris Humphreys, surrounded by the Kardashian sisters and guests John Legend and Chrissy Teigen. He continued, I wasn't up for anything, and I looked on the internet, and there was Kim with some extremely tall person, and I was like, I need to call her or something, mentioning how he attempted to convince Kim to stay away from marrying the NBA star. Uh, Wes joked, moving his hands to his chest. I started sending her pictures of certain basketball players that used to be cool, but now they wear their pants, like, all the way up here. This is your future. Uh, Kim and Humphreys filed for divorce 72 days after their highly publicized wedding in 2011. Kim married Wes in 2014. Kim also shared in a separate preview clip how Wes was able to remain calm even though their daughter Northwest had flushed his iPhone down the toilet, causing the musician to lose all his work on his recently released album, The Life of Pablo. Kim recalled of the incident, Kanye had every single rap in his iPhone before he started really working on Pablo, and then North flushed it down the toilet and it could not be retrieved. We send it we sent it to like four places and he didn't even get mad. I would have at least like screamed or cried. Nothing. Blake Shelton and girlfriend Gwen Stefani sing a duet for his forthcoming album, If I'm Honest, and the song is titled Go Ahead and Break My Heart. Stefani shared a photo on the back of the album's CD case Tuesday, revealing the record's track list and their duet. 
the Make Me Like You singer wrote on Twitter, Look what I found lying around the house, adding the hashtag I Spy My Name. Uh, the tracks on country star Shelton's latest project include Straight Out of Cold Beer, She's Got Away With Words, Came Here to Forget, and Friends, which will be featured in the Angry Birds movie. If I'm Honest will become available on purchase May 20th. Megan Trainer announced her Untouchable Tour Wednesday on the Ellen DeGeneres Show. The 22-year-old singer will kick off the venture July 14th in Vancouver, Canada, and bring the tour to a close September 24th in Boston, Massachusetts. Untouchable will promote Trainer's new album, Thank You, which is scheduled for release May 14th. Thank You is a sophomore follow-up to Title, which debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 Albums Charts in 2015. Trainer released the first single, No, from Thank You in March, and will drop better, featuring Yo Gotti on Friday. Rihanna bears her chest under a flowing sheer robe before shooting a tattooed man in a strip club in her new Needed Me video. The pop star and self-proclaimed bad girl from Barbados released a new video at noon on Wednesday teasing images from the Miami-based clip on social media ahead of time. Harmony Kareem directed the video, which shows Rihanna walking through a strip club to murder a tattooed man throwing handfuls of $100 bills at dancers. Scenes of serenity on the veranda of a mansion fronting Miami's uh, Bice Cane Bay uh, contrast with other show gun wielding men in a poor neighborhood and a busy nightclub with men throwing bills at the at strippers doing pole dances. In the end, Rihanna's tattooed target bleeds on the floor, surrounded by his mo- his own money. Rihanna was spotted in Miami shooting the new video mid March, according to TMZ. The singer also launched her world tour from Miami that week. Needed Me is the latest single from Rihanna's Ape Studio album Anti, which was released earlier this year. And now here are the top 10 songs on the Billboard Hot 100 singles charts for the week of April 30th. Number 10, g Easy and Baby Reha with Me, Myself, and I. Number 9, DNCE with Cake by the Ocean. Number 8, Justin Bieber with Love Yourself. Number 7, Fifth Harmony featuring Ty Dollar Sign with Work From Home. Number 6, My Posner with I Took a Pill in Ebeneza. Number 5, Zayn Malik with Pillow Talk. Number 4, Megan Trainor with No. Number 3, Lucas Graham with Seven Years. Number 2, Designer with Panda. And the number Number one song in the Billboard Hot 100 singles charts for the week of April 30th, Rihanna featuring Drake with Work. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1973, tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree, tops the U.S. pop charts, and creates a cultural phenomenon. The yellow ribbon has long been a symbol of support for absent or missing loved ones. There are some who believe that the tradition of the yellow ribbon dates back as far as the Civil War era, when a yellow ribbon in a woman's hair indicated that she was taken by a man who was absent due to service in the United States Army Cavalry. But research by a professional folk Loris have found no evidence to support that story. The Library of Congress itself traces the cultural ubiquity, ubiquity of this powerful symbol to the well-known song by Tony Orlando and Don, Tie Yellow Ribbon Round the Old Oak Tree, which topped the U.S. pop charts on this day in 1973. Tie Yellow Ribbon was a massive international hit, holding the top spot on both the U.S. and U.K. charts for four consecutive weeks and earning upward of three million radio plays in 1973. It was sung from the perspective of a man returning home after three years in prison and looking anxiously for an agree upon sign that the woman he loves would welcome his return. Songwriters Erwin Levine and L. Russell Brown got the idea from the story from uh, they heard while in the Army. Newspaper, New York newspaper columnist Peter Hamill sued Levine and Brown for copyright infringement because he believed they took the idea from a 1971 column of his relating a very similar story as fact. Hamill dropped his suit, however, when researchers uncovered multiple versions of the same general tale dating back to at least as far as the 1950s. Hamill said at the time, probably the story is one of these mysterious bits of folklore that emerges from the national subconscious to be told anew in one form or another. Uh, To use a more familiar term, it was an urban legend. Fast forward to January 1981, when the Library of Congress was inundated by press inquiries over the historical roots of the Yellow Ribbon. What prompted the sudden interest in the origins of the tradition was the spontaneous appearance all around the country of yellow ribbons welcoming the U.S. hostages home after 444 days in captivity in Iran. The library's experts heard assertions of connections to the 1949 John Wayne film She Wore a Yellow Ribbon, and they found a 1917 song called Round Her Neck, She Wears a Yellow Ribbon 
for her lover who is far, far away. But they found no actual evidence anyone ever actually wearing yellow ribbons or tying them to trees, lampposts, etc. Instead, the Library of Congress ruled that the most compelling evidence explaining the origins of the yellow ribbon tradition was to be found in a television interview with Penelope Langian, the wife of U.S. Charge de Affairs in Tehran, whose ribbon-bedecked uh, Maryland home appears to have started the trend in 1981. She said, it just came to me to give people something to do rather than throw dog food at Iranians. I said, why don't they tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree? That's how it started. Her reported inspired uh, inspiration, the Tony Orlando song that reached number one on this date in 1973. And as your entertainment report for Thursday, April 21st, 2016, I'm your host, Mr. Dan Tambray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you all.